Uh, my name's Dave Matheson. I'm a, I'm a booking agent at uh, Bandshop, the largest corporate entertainment agency in Australia. So at Bandshop, we've got a comedy shop as well, which is uh, all comedians. Bandshop mostly looks after uh, corporate entertainment on the musical side of things. Uh, but, I mean, we've, we've got the capacity to do everything. We've got uh, a roster that includes MCs, speakers, uh, comedians, musicians. Uh, we've got circus acts, God, we can even get a sword swallower. Most artists approach us, um, so we, we tend to find, uh, particularly with musicians, we get demo after demo after demo after demo. Uh, I probably get more than 100 demo emails a day. Um, so, uh, so I don't get around to listening to them all, but uh, uh, at times we will approach them. Um, specifically, we've got a number of artists that have come off The Voice, X Factor, uh, Australian Idol, shows like that, that, uh, that we'll approach directly. Um, and also through our own networks as well. Uh, so, for example, we've all been in the industry for, for a reasonably long time, so we know a lot of people. When somebody has a new project going out there, or a new show, or a new band, or whatever it might be, uh, we're we're always obviously aware of that. And uh, if it fits fits the brief that uh, that we sort of fit into, then uh, then we'll approach that as well. I started working with cover bands when I was about eighteen, uh, and at, at one time I was in eight bands, uh, which was a pretty pretty busy, hectic lifestyle. Uh, but uh, we, we had good success. I, I had uh, a couple of bands in particular where we uh, got a few residencies. Uh, one band in particular, we had a really good uh, sort of triangular residency, we called it. We had the Sandringham Hotel, uh, Wild Bills, uh, as it were, at, uh, at Southland Shopping Centre. Uh, and uh, we also had the Edgy, uh, which I think that's closed down now too, uh, out in Mentone. So we had uh, all our gigs night after night, uh, all at the same place, or all in the same area. Um, but yeah, started working in cover bands, which it's a lot of fun, it's a great way to meet other musicians. It's, uh, it's, it's also a great way to, uh, I guess, work on your songwriting, because when you play in a cover band, you tend to play the best songs that have ever been written, uh, or at least the most popular songs that have ever been written. So uh, you, you learn a lot about how to write a great song. My name is Tao Suwanakit. I had qualification in early childhood education uh, in uh, diploma qualified as well as Bachelor of Fine Art and Master of Fine Art. My inspiration for starting the School of Art was probably my life that evolving around art practice for so long. Uh, I've been practicing art since 2004 and I find that by offering back to the community especially to the young learners it provides uh, a creative and uh, imaginative aspect that uh, move away from just the, the structured curriculum that you see in schools in other subjects. So I would like to continue to foster that uh, side of art practice and hence the starting of Melbourne School of Art. From probably by the time I was in kindergarten, that's when Probably my artistic side start kicking in. I guess I'm not very good with words then. So the only tool that was used for communication for me then was through pictures. And from there, it just always paper and pens or paper and pencils. I really enjoy uh, drawing animals. Uh, I share a lot of common interests uh, with the natural world. So I always attend, uh, went to zoos and museums and translate that into my pictures. When I first came to Australia, I was uh, enrolled myself in the Masters of Fine Art course and utilized my background in early childhood education. And I was working at RMIT Children's Centre for five years about. And from there, uh, I start pursuing or continue my professional careers in children's book uh, illustration and writing as well. I play both roles in terms of writing and illustration. Uh, some of the books I have written and illustrated myself, while others I work uh, collaboratively with other authors. What made me started writing and illustrating children's book probably came from uh, my background in animation. So my undergraduate studies was in animation in 3D 
uh, animation. And upon graduation, I realized that even though there's a demand for the 3D animation industry, but there's something missing, something tactile, something sensorial that you can touch and feel, or the accidental mark making of a pencil. But yet, I still enjoy uh, the storytelling aspect. And hence, I was looking into the right balance between the two. And so I started pursuing my uh, profession in children's book. My name's Mitzi. And uh, in terms of qualifications, I mean, I did a whole lot of things at university that I'm not doing anymore. I studied physiotherapy for a while, I did a science degree, I did diploma in education, but I don't do any of that anymore. Now I teach uh, West African dance. So uh, I've been teaching West African dance for about 15 years now, and I kind of have been doing it for about mm, just a little bit longer than that. Um, if you're going to be doing West African dance, there aren't any qualifications you can get in Australia. They possibly are overseas, but it's more about just doing it and going to Africa and having that experience and getting the movement in your body and having, yeah, and learning about how it all fits with the rhythms and those sorts of things. And you can't really learn that at university. So I went to Africa and that changed my life. Uh, seeing the way people live you know, in a poor country like that, but they still have this access to this joy. And that was what was coming from the drumming and the dancing and these community experiences of being together. And I came back and I kind of had culture shock coming back, realising what we were missing. We, had all, we have all the creature comforts and luxuries, but we're missing that connection with each other and that joy. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'll teach you um, one of the moves that I'm doing at the moment in one of my classes. This is this dance called Palogo. It's, that's the name of the drum from Ghana. That's the first place I went to in Africa. Um, and so if you guys want to, to get up and do some dancing with me. So this is a move from Palogo. So you'd hear the call that goes like this. And then you just put your feet out to the side like this. When I'm drumming and dancing, I'm f I feel happy. And that's how I've always felt from the beginning when I started doing it. And I always thought if that feeling goes away, I just stop and that would be fine with me. I never intended to make a career out of it. But uh, all these years later, it's still there.